Pro Playmakers. These are the skills that separate. Welcome to the Playmakers video blog number three. The topic today is on offensive timing. Now offensive timing is a very, very important skill for all players because it allows you the opportunity to get the puck more often and allows you to get the puck in better spots so that you can make more plays. Now there's three elements that are important in offensive timing. You've got to arrive to the right place at the right time with the right amount of speed. So those are the three elements. Place, time, with speed. If you have any one of those three elements missing, then you don't have good offensive timing. So it's all, always better to be a little bit late than too early with your timing. If you get there a little bit later, you realize that you're a little bit late in your timing. You can always make up time with, by, by accelerating, but if, once you're there too early, now you're stuck because now you're going to get the puck and you're standing still and you're stopped and you don't have an opportunity then to make more plays. So it's always better to be a little bit late. So here's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to tell you how you can improve your ability to have better offensive timing. Um, one thing you need is control skating. So here's what control skating means. Let's say you're the centerman here and you have a winger who is, who is here and the defenseman is now making the pass here and you now as a centerman are trying to get the pass here. Now in order to get this puck, one you want to control your skating so that, you're, so that you have good timing, but the other thing you want to do is you want to take back some ice. So if the pass, you read that the pass is going to go this way, you don't want to turn here because now you're going to be, by the time he gets the puck, when you get the pass here, you're going to be too early. And so what happens is now you're going to get the puck here, it's too late. And you're going to be slowed down by the time you get the puck and you have nowhere to skate into. So by taking back the ice, you now have an opportunity now to accelerate on this plane. Now, the other advantage of being able to accelerate on that particular plane is now you give this puck carrier multiple opportunities to get you the puck. So he can give you the puck really at any point during this particular uh, route. When you go this way, he only has one crack to give you the puck. One, if he misses you on that time, you're not going to get it. So that's the idea of control skating. And what you use is you use dips and taking back ice in order to control your skating and control the space that you use in order to get the puck. Now let's take a look maybe at the other side. If you're a winger, let's say you're the weak side winger here. And the weak side winger here is, is, is in the middle of the ice and they got the winger here and now again he, he gets the puck and now you're trying to provide some offensive support to this particular player. Now most players they're going to come right through here like this and again if you run the risk here of one getting there too early and two when, if you do get the puck you got nowhere to skate into and that may be a bigger problem than just only giving the guy one opportunity to get you the puck. It's not enough to get the puck it's what you can do once you get it, that's what defines you as a player. So what I want you to do is, in order to get improve your timing is, if you read that the play is coming this way, you're going to take a step this way. Take a step away from the puck. And then you're going to come back across the ice. And when you do that, you improve your ability to give this guy multiple pass options. He can hit you multiple times instead of only getting one crack. Once you get it, you now have a lot more room to skate into and you have a great opportunity here to build speed because you're putting yourself at a bit of a disadvantage. You go away from the puck first, so now you feel the pressure to accelerate back to the play and that's what's important. One of the biggest elements of offensive timing is understanding whether you're the hound or the spider. Now the difference between the hound and the spider is very significant in how you would be projected to play at the next level. So you're a pretty good player at the level that you're at now, but you tend to get the puck because you're chasing the puck down, you're winning races to lose pucks, you're getting it because of your hard work. If that's how you're receiving the puck, that makes you a hound. In order to be a spider, spider's a guy that's in the middle of the web and all the plays come through him. There's a big difference between being the hound and the spider and you want to be the, the spider where the pucks are coming through you. And the spider is a guy who relies on his timing. A hound is a guy who relies on his effort and his ability to jump at loose pucks and win races. And while it's good to have a good balance between being the hound and the spider, 
In order to project yourself at the next level, it's going to be very important that you have a lot more spider tendencies because that's what's going to be important to get the puck.